No, we are not talking about video, we are talking about audio. How to use contrast effectively. That is today's video, let's get into it, right here and right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Enlo Kitchen and if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing because whenever I upload a new video, you'll be the first to find out all about it, what it is if you've clicked the bell icon as well. I also like to welcome Mats Boberg to my Patreon page. What's up? Thank you for supporting me over there. So patreon.com slash Kitchen is the place where you can find some extra perks. If you hear me talking about stuff here on these videos and you like what you see and you love what you hear, most importantly, obviously, then you can head over there and see if there's anything of your liking. I'm talking about merchandise, I'm talking about um, some extra perks as well. Pretty soon some live streams are going to happen over there, so it's on an AMA basis, so you can ask me anything. If you're producing, you're doing this live stuff and you're hitting a wall or sometimes you just don't know what direction to take, whether it be sound-wise, sound selection, mix-wise or whatever, you know, just head over there, we'll probably find a solution and uh, you can ask me anything and uh, we'll make it work. I also like to say what's up to Art Baby. Thank you for sending me the sounds. He sent me a few of his Reese bass lines on last week's video, and I'm actually going to uh, uh, load them up in my MPC pretty soon. And in a future video, I'll see if I can uh, make some noise with one of the samples that he's made as well. So stay tuned for that. And I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. We are growing in numbers. There's strength in numbers. I think it's cool. So obviously, thank you for supporting the flow, the flavor, and the movement. I sound like a rebel, don't I? Things are starting to close down in the world, especially in my neck of the woods at the moment. So the government is basically advising everyone to stay at home, work from home. So with my portable life set, I thought, well, you know what? Let's take it home. So welcome to my little quarantine home studio. Links to the equipment that I'm using is in the fold below. So if you see the page and it says show more, click more and the page will open. And then you will see whatever it is that I'm using and you'll find links affiliate links to the equipment that I'm using down there as well. Now, contrasts. What are contrasts and how would you use them? There are some advantages to predictability when it comes to doing a live set, especially when you're doing it in the doorless realm. When you sit behind your computer and you work it that way, you can easily stretch out the patterns for as long as you want them to be. If you do a drop or a big breakdown, this thing can go on for maybe 32 bars, even longer, with long white noise bushes. That 9 out of 10 times is not the case when you're doing a doorless slicer because the sequences that you might be using, some of them, they only stretch as far as 4 bars, maybe 64 beats. Having said that though, there is an upside to the predictability because your crowd knows where they are, they know where they stand, they know how to follow you easily, but the downside is sometimes things might get boring and when it's boring you start to lose interest and when people are losing interest they're not listening anymore. So is there a way of adding some stuff to your music so that it will not sound boring? And what I do use for my contrasts are polyrhythms. I've touched on that like a few weeks ago. Today let's go into a 3 to 4 ratio and to a 5 to 4 ratio polyrhythm which means that like within a 4 beat loop there's going to be either 5 notes or 3 notes and I'm going to do that with my SH-101 because it's easy to get Get into that specific realm. I've got a beat setup that sounds something like this. Nothing too complicated to be honest. It just sounds uh, pretty easy. Clap. I got my Novation launch control over there which is mapped to the Akai NPC Live over here. Pretty much all the drums that are in here I mapped them out separately so that I don't have to menu dive into the Akai. And in turn I've got some samples that are wired to the Octatrack. But this thing will work wonders on the dance floor. This beat will work. Now we're gonna get into polyrhythms as a contrast to this sparse one to three four beat. So a bit of a division when you're going for a three to four ratio polyrhythm, it means you've got like three beats in a four bar rhythm. So the loop will reloop itself on bar 12. And this is how that sounds. So this is the simplest way of a polyrhythm in contrast to the beat. And what I do, I take out the clap as well out of the beat so that you don't have that sense of a beat that's constantly falling because we know it's like one, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap instead of the clap, clap, clap. So when there's a steady clap in the beat, it will divide your groove into half, which means 
it will get even more predictable. Now, you hear me say predictability is not always a bad thing because the crowd that's listening to you understands where you're headed, they know what to expect and they can follow along easily. But after a while things become a little bit boring and how do you overcome that? Now this is the TBO3. Which I've got hidden away in the back here. And it's trying to get my bearings obviously because I'm in a different location than where you usually see my movies coming from. So everything is a bit condensed. So let's turn the TBO3 off. Yeah? Because one thing that I've seen uh, that ha is very versatile in terms of polyrhythms and in terms of contrast is the SH-101. Now with the SH-101, which I've also mapped to the multi-clock over there, it gets a trigger signal, so whenever I'm hitting the notes here, it starts to play um, a pattern. Now, again, this was a 3 to 4 ratio polyrhythm. Again, it's too fast for me to even count it. So that means that within the four bar loop, there are three notes, yeah? So, three times four is 12. So every 12 bars, it will have a perfect loop. Which is important if you want to introduce things over a longer period of time. But the thing with a three to four ratio of polyrhythm, in my um, opinion, is that it also starts to become a little bit predictable. So what you can do is if I'm playing notes over the edit 101 similar routine but now because i've got this pattern on hold and i've got my arpeggio on the up position otherwise it will start going up and down like here now it goes up and down so now it's not a three to four but it's just a regular beat one two three four and one two for actually this pattern is up divided in even two notes one two one two one but going up it will go like now what if we can add a fifth note to the three now if I'm gonna play my regular clap into this pattern You'll see, it will become something else now. Now the reason I like to use five note polyrhythms as well is because I, I get to uh, lengthen the attention span a little bit more than if I would do it with a three. So if I'm going uh, back to my TBI three. Let me tune it for you. There you go. What I like to do with the 3 and the 5 is if I've got a 3 to 4 ratio po uh, polyrhythm, which I've got on my bass line right here on the TBO3, listen carefully to what happens if I'm going to play a kick drum with it. Let me lower this for you here, as this one on. It starts to become part of the drums and you can bury the bass line way in the background, which means it's another ingredient you add to your music, which is a contrast, but it doesn't really take that much attention out of the listener's ears so that it's he or she is constantly focused on what's going on. And when you're making music, you want to do a doorless live set. This thing now um, needs to metabolize itself and work itself into ways where actually the music is doing the work. You're not supposed to be stressing a lot. So, of course, it's, it's something that got to do with filters. Because if I open up the filter here on my SH-101, 
Obviously, this is going to take the attention. Switch the waveform from a saw to a square on the roller. Now it's even more glued. Put a high end on there. Two, three, and. Let me groove it up a little bit more. multi plug over here, easy to pitch your um, MIDI channels. If they're not aligned correctly, you can actually just set them straight. And let's put a little bit of groove on it as well, because I think it's a little bit too straight on the beat. Yeah, I get a bit of a groove going. Make it a little bit more minimal. Now to switch it around, let's take the five down and let's up the three, yeah? So the five on the one-on-one. -on -one. Longer notes. Key transpose. Okay, so now we've got the bass line playing over here. Let's see if we can just switch it around. how these notes are starting to gel together again? This is the track that I mostly use if I've got my track moving and everything is going in a certain direction. I need a few things that are not stuck to the one, two, three, four. And uh, these are the contrasts that I use. There's a lot of contrasts that you can use. Let's turn off the TBA3. Yeah, because with this thing I can play like Open it up a little bit more. And so forth, and you know, that's the way you can just, just go with it. I like to do it because, let's see what we got, because I got more music playing. Let's see what we have in the track. Strings, okay. So you can hear that this thing is just going forward, yeah? All the drums now. Now there's a straight four to the floor arpeggio playing as well. Here you can hear what happens if you got like a polyrhythm that restarts on the one again. Bam, here. And there's also a five to four polyrhythm, so this would re this infinite loop would just play on and not restart on bar 20, obviously. Because five times four is 20. Now let's see if we can put another five with the one on one back in there. If you pay attention, this is definitely where you can hear the difference between analog and digital. As the audio thing is microphones is a digital machine, which is why I only use it for snappy short notes. Let me take it out. I'm not going to be an advocate for analog or digital, but I do think that this sounds a little bit more pleasing to my ears. And the space echo, which I've got hidden away in the background, if I'm opening that up, it becomes even more spacey. Check this out, make a break drop like this. Open it up. Filter open. 
resonance, show notes, and here we go again. And because of the expectation being somewhere else rather than every four or eight or 16 or 32 bars, something is uh, expected to happen, you can imagine that you will lengthen the attention span of the crowd listening to what it is that you're doing. Now what I love on my one-on-one -on -one is that it's basically got two different ways of sequencing stuff. I mean, you've got like uh, the load and play on the sequencer and then you've got the arpeggiator. And of course, if you turn everything off, you can play whatever you like. So I love this machine to play some stuff live. You know, if, you, if you're like chicken shit like I was in the beginning, um, you just basically fill in the tracks and play like that. You know, if, you, if you're not like a big keyboard player, I can imagine, it's easy to stick your stuff on the machines and just have it play like this and just work the filters. But if you get more confident, if, you, if your sound is starting to develop itself a little bit more, then obviously after a while you think like, you know what? Let's just add something that I can actually play live. But I do love the fact that with just holding one button and playing a few notes. And then just thinking like, okay, let's put this on play. Might not be the most musical sequence in the world, but it's actually something you just play and people see you inter interact with them. And um, a live set is all about interaction. It's all about making a connection with your crowd at the end of the day. So I do use the um, sequencer on it, but I do love to just, uh, like I just showed you also, uh, put my arpeggio, put it in the up position or in the down position. You know, and from the minute on my multi-clock that um, uh, uh, trigger signal, external clock signal is, is working, whenever I hit the notes, <coughs> And then, and because I'm lazy, they've made a hold button for me here, which is like, go to the bathroom, leave it play for like 30 minutes, everybody's gonna like it. So basically, it boils down to doing something out of the box maybe, trying to just come up with ideas that are different from just getting the fourth to the floor sparse uh, routine. It's not too bad if people know where you're headed, but it's going to be boring if that thing just doesn't look to stabilize into something else. Hence my trick with the polyrhythms, and polyrhythms can be anything. But the most musical in my sense are the three to four and the five to four, uh, or seven to four. But the longer they are and the more unpredictable they become, the harder it's going to be for untrained musical ears to find out what it is that you're doing. There needs to be some sort of a pattern in there to keep it interesting for your uh, dance floor. I mean, let me know how you do it. Maybe you find out that there's a way that I didn't touch upon or I'm completely talking out of my, uh, you know what? So let me know how you think these things will work. Also, uh, if you want to support this whole vibe, thank you for all the new subscribers, by the way. I mean, we're growing in numbers. That's going in the right direction. So I'm very happy for that. Um, you can head over to the Patreon page, obviously, which is like uh, patreon.com slash analogkitchen, um, where you can find some perks, some unreleased samples and stuff like that. Future music, everything, you know, it's just uh, a little step close to uh, getting where you want to go. Anyway, um, I will get you uh, in another video. See ya.